Is the MSI GP63 Leopard better than Asus Helios 300 or the Omen 15? Well, this is Stephen from Owned and Disowned, and we are going to take a look at it now. HID Evolution uh, sent me the MSI GP63 Leopard 8RE to review. It is a 15 inch gaming laptop with a 6 core i7 8758 CPU and a GTX 1060. It starts at $1200, but as configured, mine is just under $1500. Now, from first glance, it looks similar to the Helios 300 with a black brushed aluminium lid with red accents, but I do prefer the black rear vents over the red ones on the Helios 300. From the front, they are actually quite similar, although the Helios has a 144Hz IPS panel and this GP63 has a 120Hz 3ms TN panel, with excellent colour accuracy of about 100% sRGB and 88% of Adobe RGB. If you thought the Helios 300 panel was a good one, then this one is better. It's perfect for video and photo work. Viewing angles from the side are very good, and even when viewed in a brightly lit environment, the image is still pretty good. All this is helped by it having a higher level of brightness versus the Helios 300. This is until you get to about 25% where they are the same. Also, the MSI panel had no backlight bleed at all. Again, this is better than the Helios. In my ghosting tests, they performed very well. The panel doesn't have very much flex and the hinges are nice and stiff, so no complaints from me. The webcam, unfortunately, is not very good. So here's the 720p webcam, and I must admit it looks pretty grainy. Probably one of the worst ones I've seen so far. At five pounds, or about 2.26 kilos, it is one and a half pounds lighter than the Helios 300, but slightly thicker at 29 millimeters. Now, one downside of this lightness and the not so large feet is that it can slide around quite easily on a glass table such as mine. Getting inside is easy. Just remove several Phillips head screws. Now, normally MSI would have a warranty sticker over one of the screws, but if you get configured by uh, HID Revolution, there isn't one. Inside, we have a 51 watt hour battery, a one terabyte 7200 RPM two and a half inch drive, an Intel 9560 Wi Fi card, and two RAM slots maxing out at 64 gigabytes. And there are two PCI Express M.2 slots. All can be configured as you wish by HID Evolution. The CPU has its own three heat pipes, and the GPU has four with a total of four heat sinks. So, this has the making of a good, nice, cool system. At the front are two large 3 watt speakers, good for 73 decibels, and they sound better than most. At idle, the CPU fan spins up to 2412 RPM with a quiet 25 decibels, so it's perfectly fine for work in college. With the system under full load and the auto fans activated, the CPU cranks up to 4528 RPM and the GPU up to 3692, and is still relatively quiet 38 decibels. Now you may recall that the requirement for a Max-Q system was to have the fan noise below 40 decibels. Now this GP63 has a full-fledged GTX 1060, and you can do whatever you want on this system without increasing this fan speed. But if you want to, MSI has some great options in their Dragon Center software. Basic lets you choose a set fan speed. Advanced lets you create uh, your own fan curve for both the CPU and the GPU, and the Cooler Boost just cranks it up to max. The CPU fan goes up to 5,333 RPM and the GPU to 5,647 RPM with a max fan noise of 45 decibels, which is perfectly acceptable. But if you configure with HID Evolution to do a repaste, which to be honest only starts at $35, you should be able to turn it down to that 40 decibel mark at least. Now, one thing to note here, HID Evolution did undervolt it by 40 millivolts out of the box. But during my gaming tests, that undervolt only had a 1 degree Celsius impact. It's not a huge undervolt, and I did uh, actually get it to about 100 millivolt undervolt, but beyond that, it would crash. So as you can see, the temperatures of the CPU and the GPU are great. We have the average CPU temperature in blue, and with the auto fan, we average 70 degrees Celsius. The same as the stock pasted three, uh, Helios 300. But the max uh, CPU temperature was only 78 versus the 91 on the Helios. To bring the Helios temperature down without undervolting, you need to use their max fan, as you can see on the bottom graph, maxing at 86 degrees, whilst the GP63 was only 68 degrees. 
Sure, the liquid metal and the undervolt do help, but getting a cooler system than the Helios 300, uh, which is using the Max fan, whilst only using the Auto fan on the MSI, is no mean feat. The average GPU temperature is in green and the uh, Max is in yellow. There isn't much difference uh, between this and the Helios, but uh, the peak temperatures are you know, five to 10 degrees cooler, depending on the fan mode you use. The keyboard area stays nice and cool at around about 38 degrees, helped by the hot air being exhausted via the four heat sinks. Now the chassis underneath is also pretty cool at about 30 degrees. You know, those extra few millimeters in thickness of the laptop do help insulate you from those heat pipes. Now this is not bad, considering you get a peak of about 130 watts uh, pulled from the, from the wall and uh, this 180 watt power supply that comes with it is a perfect fit. The keyboard deck, um, like most MSI laptops, is brushed aluminium along with the Synaptix trackpad which has separate clicky mouse buttons. Now tracking and gestures are okay, but they're not as good as Windows Precision. The Steel Series keyboard has 1.9 millimeters of travel and is fairly solid. Each key uses silver paint to make them uh, easy to see and there are three levels of uh, backlighting controlled by these keys. Now, as is typical for MSI laptops, the Windows key is moved to the right hand side, but this can be switched uh, to, to the FN key, you know, in the BIOS. The volume and screen brightness controls are here. Top right, there are three buttons. You have the power button, you have one that uh, opens the Dragon Center software and one button for the Cooler Boost fan. In the Dragon Center utility, you can keep an eye on the CPU, GPU, memory, and disk usage. You can switch between Sport, Turbo, Comfort, and Eco profiles. Now, Comfort doesn't seem to do an awful lot, to be honest. The CPU clock speed is the same as in Sport mode. Eco, however, does reduce the idle CPU clock to about 1000 MHz, even if you are in the Windows best performance mode. Now, this is good for increasing battery life. You also have Turbo mode, which overclocks the graphics card. As you can see, I boosted the core by 180 MHz and the memory by 220. The MSI RGB option changes the color hue of the screen according to profiles such as gaming or movie. The LED wizard lets you alter the key color in three different zones, as well as choose profiles such as uh, breathing or wave. The gaming mode highlights the left-hand side of the keyboard. MSI has their app player, which allows you to play mobile games uh, on your laptop, should you wish. One of my favorite options is the battery calibration, which maximizes your battery life. I was able to get just under five hours of streaming YouTube at 25% brightness and power saver on, which is about an hour longer than the Helios 300 and the Omen 15. So for anyone on the go, this is very useful. On the left-hand side, you have the Kensington lock, you have an air vent, an ethernet port, HDMI 2.0, mini display port, USB 3.1 type A, USB 3.1 type C, and headphone mic jacks. On the right, there is an SD card reader, which unfortunately with an SD card inserted, it does stick out quite a bit. You have two more USB 3.1 type A ports, a fourth air vent, and the power connector at the back. Now, at no point did my mouse hand feel hot due to this air vent. It was sufficiently far back that, you know, I did not notice it. In senior bench, the GP63 performs great. HID Evolution have tweaked it to max performance out of the box. It beats both the Helios 300 and the Omen 15. Now this is a short test however, so let's take a look at Adobe Premiere Pro doing a CPU render. I thought the Helios at 22 minutes 40 seconds was good, but indeed HID Evolution has pushed its performance to pretty much its max. As you can see, it matches the overclocked Helios 300. Now compared to the Omen 15, it is 14% faster as it maintains a higher boost clock. Doing a long video encode with Handbrake, it performs similar to the Helios 300 and Omen 15 out of the box. But when you uh, push the CPU using throttle stop, it and the Helios 300 leave the Omen 15 in the dust. The CPU is also running nice and cool, at stock peaking at 73 degrees Celsius, and when overclocked, it matches the temperature of the stock Helios 300. Not bad at all. Okay, so let's take a look at some games. Now in all my gameplay videos, I use turbo mode to overclock the GPU and I delete that undervolt. I also use the auto fan. So with this system, this is pretty much the max temperatures you will see. Far Cry 5 Ultra settings, the CPU and the GPU remain in the 70s and the GPU is utilized 99%. Now note, 
at this setting, over nine gigabytes of RAM is used. So I really do recommend the 16 gigabyte configuration. Performance is similar to the Omen 15 and Helios 300 with 60 FPS minimum and about 70 FPS on average. I was asked to run Fortnite at the lowest possible settings. And for sure, the game looks like crap. But if you're after the max FPS, this is it, about 170. Now, switching to the Epic settings, the CPU hovers in the high 60s and the GPU in the low 70s with just over eight gigabytes of RAM used. Frame rates are still pretty high. You know, it, it suits this 120 hertz screen just fine. Performance is the same as the Helios 300 with minimum frame rates above 60 FPS. I also throw in the result of a GTX 1070 notebook just for reference, but still a GTX 1060 is more than capable here. Overwatch, Epic settings, again, the CPU and the GPU are running in the 70s, so no undervolt is required. Now remember, this is with autofan and max 38 decibels of noise. With the Omen 15, you would, either have, you would have to undervolt it. And with the Helios 300, you would have to crank the fan up to max, and, and to be honest, it would still be hotter. Look at how much RAM is used, 10 gigabytes. Performance is similar to the rest though. The Helios did do better when overclocked, but not by much. Again, this is perfect for the 120 hertz display. In PUBG Auto settings, the CPU is running in the mid 60s and the GPU in the low 70s. Now this is how a laptop should run. I hope other manufacturers take note and change the cooling system accordingly. Okay, yeah, sure, this is uh, re being repainted with liquid metal, but that can only do so much. I am confident that even with a decent thermal paste, you will get similar results. The GP63 actually performs slightly better than the Helios 300 and actually quite a bit better than, than the Dell G7. 70 FPS on average is pretty good. Battlefield 1 Ultra settings, the temperatures are in the mid 70s. Gameplay was smooth and I'm glad I had 16 gigabytes of RAM installed. As you can see, it is needed. Now make sure to run dual channel to give best results. It performs slightly better than the Dell G7. I include the result from a 1070 Max-Q laptop so you can see what extra performance you could get, which is around about 25% at stock, but overclocking the GTX 1060 does close that gap a bit. Finally, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Neo Max settings. We see pretty much the same. Excellent thermals. In most GTX 1060 systems, the CPU runs hotter than the GPU, and that is because of the usual shared heat pipe setup. Heck, even the uh, 1050 Ti in the HP Pavilion ran hotter than this. Performance-wise, it ran exactly the same as the Omen 15 and the Helios 300. But I would rather take the uh, MSI GP63 as it is cooler and very quiet for the performance you get. Now to sum up, I would say that if you don't need Thunderbolt 3, this is the GTX 1060 laptop to get. It is lightweight, has excellent screen, and it has, uh, you know, it's perfect for gaming and uh, content creation. It has decent speakers and its cooling system is top notch. Now, if you do live in perhaps in a hotter climate, it is good to know that MSI also has some good uh, software to uh, configure your fan control there. Now, I'd like to thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.